All right, thanks for clicking. This is Joe Fritz here to draw another kaiju um, on my kaiju beastery page. Beastery page. Um, this is a kind of a character I've been drawing for a while now. Never really did a finished drawing. It's something that's been kind of, you know, swimming around in my head for a little bit. Um, this, uh, I call this guy Byrantis. He's basically just, um, a two-headed monster. Um, basically this, this kind of fills my quota for giant reptile. Um, and of course I want to do something interesting with each of the, uh, you know, kaiju tropes. So we did the ape last week and this is the giant lizard or dinosaur this week. Um, so you can't have a kaiju universe without having um, a giant lizard of some kind. So this is my giant lizard, and he is called Byrantis. He has two heads. One head breathes fire. The other head breathes ice. Um, I know it's kind of goofy. It's kind of playground-esque, but, I mean, that's kind of the spirit, kind of where the spirit of these uh, these characters come from. It's just my my love of uh 1990s action figure culture i guess um you can see kind of has these uh these heavy sort of plates on his back kind of like a stegosaurus or whatever and he's got big old muscly legs he has to have big old muscly legs to carry all that weight because he's hundreds of feet high <laughs> He's at least a hundred feet high. I don't know. I should I should sit down and try to figure out based on um, the size of an Apache helicopter or whatever kind of helicopter I I tried to draw there. Um, how big this guy is? Because you probably can't. Yeah, you can see it right there. I'm I'm going to be drawing a um, a helicopter coming out of his mouth. I have to try to do something so that they don't just look like um, monsters. I want to or just like D and D monsters. I want to put something in the drawing to you know, show the scale. You can see the tank right there on the other guy. And here's the helicopter I'm drawing on this guy. Um, one of his heads is a, based on a Ceratinosaurus, which was a dinosaur with, uh, was a carnivore with a, with just a spike on his nose, um, which always interests me a lot. And then the other head is based on uh, Carnotaurus, which was another uh, he was a meat eater who had uh, horns. Of course, not not horns like that. Not horns like bull horns. I'm kind of playing that up just to kind of play up because that's the head that breathes fire. Um, so I wanted to make it look a little bit more demonic. Um, still having trouble with glitches in Photoshop. Um, I think it. I think it's just because I'm trying to record on the same computer that I am drawing on. And I think it just does not like that, and uh, and it's like it's like one of these programs is just gonna mess up, and it's like okay, as long as it's not the recording one, I will survive. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, you can see me just delineating here, just drawing these big thick lines around anything that I want to be up front, anything that's gonna be up front. There it goes. I have a very scribbly style. I always have. Um, that's that's one thing I think that holds me back a lot is my hands are just naturally shaky. Um, and maybe I don't know. I I, pra I try to practice a lot, but sometimes um, I just get late. Like with these ones, I've been kind of lazy. Um, I know I can draw better than this, but I'm just trying to do something you know what I mean like I'm just trying to get something on paper or well digital um, just because I I feel I have this desire to create things and sometimes I just have to to make something and I don't care if it's going to be good or whatever you can see I got rid of that construction in the background there the the lines I use so um, here I am just adding all the little details in, little 
give a little hint of, of scales. It's something I never quite mastered. Like, when do you draw the the scales in? And when do you not draw the scales in? I like it. I like the, what I did with uh, his scales there. They kind of look like freckles. <laughs> He's got freckles. And... I don't know. I, I kind of like the texture I gave the skin um, a little bit. Just the... Man, I've been... I've been drawing dinosaurs since I was a kid, and uh, I've come up with kind of things that I give all dinosaurs, uh, regardless of whether they probably had them in real life or not. <clears throat> One of those things is the um, kind of the scales along the top of their fingers. It's something that um, something birds have that I've noticed, and I think that the first time I noticed them on a dinosaur was in Jurassic Park toys. And so, um, you know, just as a little kid, um, setting up my Jurassic Park, uh, T-Rex and, uh, and just drawing that, um, you can see a lot of, a lot of that influence there, like the muscles and stuff like that. And the way the legs attach to the body. If you look at that old, uh, I want to say it was Kenner. I don't remember who was doing, uh, Jurassic Park toys at the at that time but but yeah I had that that rubbery T-Rex it was the juvenile T-Rex so it was the smaller one uh, which wasn't actually in the movie that was just in the book here I am talking about Jurassic Park so uh obviously the giant lizard or dinosaur trope is common in almost all kaiju fiction there's always going to be a giant lizard at some point and we have Godzilla to thank for that, for being the most famous. Um, quite possibly the most famous dinosaur in fiction, Godzilla. Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of any anybody else that would be more famous. But, um, you know, you really, you can't have um, giant monsters without somebody thinking about Godzilla. So you've got to have some kind of Godzilla stand-in. So this one is mine, but obviously I want to do something different with him. I want him to uh, be... I want him to stand out from the other giant lizard crowd. The crowd... It's all the giant lizards, all of them. So, um... I, you know, looking at this, I noticed that the uh, Ceratonosaurus head, his ice-breathing head... Um, he kind of looks like the, uh, 1998, uh, American Godzilla, and I didn't realize that until just now, but, you know, whatever. I don't, I, that movie, I don't like it, but I don't really care enough, because, like, I want to say, like, either a year or two years later we got like a real Godzilla movie and you know it was it was fine it was I don't think um, Toho would have kept making Godzilla movies if uh, if that movie had of hadn't have come out because they had killed off Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Destroya or Destroyer depending on whether or not you want to you know pronounce it correctly um So, uh, you know, I, I think they would have eventually made another Godzilla movie at some point, but I think that um, the American Godzilla and how it was just a complete departure from everything we like about Godzilla kind of pushed them to go like, oh man, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this for real. And you kind of see that happening now with um, the legendary Godzilla, and then immediately, almost immediately after legendary Godzilla kind of came out they're like oh we're gonna make another Godzilla movie and it that was Shin Godzilla which uh is an insane um 
it's such a crazy movie and it's so not just about giant monsters which all the best science fiction movies aren't just about giant monsters you know it's it's clearly there's clearly the message of uh you know how bureaucracy can get in the way of um helping people or doing the right thing you know like how some people view their careers as being more important than uh than helping people and i think that that's a that's an important message no matter no matter what country um it's being told in you know whatever whatever country so um yeah here's uh here's me coloring in the red a lot of uh, a lot of Tiamat inspiration in this character design. Uh, Tiamat, of course, being the um, the evil dragon goddess of well Dungeons and Dragons, but she was also in Babylonian lore. And of course, she's in um, I believe she's in Final Fantasy too. I think they make a big deal of her being in Final Fantasy, although Bahamut is more more famous for being in Final Fantasy, I think, even though he's he's the good dragon god. He's the awesome dragon god. Um, but yeah, they they go back to Babylonian times and they weren't they weren't really dragons, but you know, whatever. At this point, um my computer went into dark mode, so that's why it uh Got all yellow there, because um, it was nighttime when I was drawing this part. I think it kind of adds to the mood a little bit, like like maybe it's nighttime and he's going to attack the city soon, uh, and so they're they're scrambling the fighters and uh, I don't know, <laughs> they're scrambling the attack helicopters. This, uh, I mean, having two heads is something that happens in nature sometimes, especially with, like, snakes. And I always wonder, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they don't live that long, but I always wonder, like, how they manage to control um, the body. Like, is one of them in control of the body and one of them not? Which is so weird. Of course, there is um, there's that young uh, girl who, uh, well... I guess two girls uh, who were born kind of conjoined and they are essentially a two headed person. Um, and I guess one of them controls one arm, the other controls the other arm and they've just kind of gotten used to, I assume that if you were born in that situation, I mean the human brain being what it is, especially when you're, you're young and you're trying to figure stuff out, you just kind of figure it out. But then you have situations like too bad from the masters of the universe uh, who, uh, you know, they, they like are constantly punching each other. I mean, that's what their action figure did anyways. I mean, that was the whole point of their action figure. <laughs> it's like, look, he's punching himself. Yeah, definitely a lot of too bad in this inspiration too. Uh, did too bad inspired stuff in here. Masters of the universe. It's another... Another thing that's kind of very formative uh, for me is Masters of the Universe. Looking forward to the new She-Ra. I know a lot of people are hating on the designs or whatever. I think it looks, I think it looks awesome. I can't wait. I want to see what, I want to see what it looks like when it's done. I'm not gonna speculate on the designs, although I think the designs look awesome. So in here, I'm, uh, I'm literally just putting some color down using the smudge tool to make it look smoky, like fire. And then I just go in and just sort of um, lower the... Um, uh, make it more transparent so it just looks wispy and smoky and everything. So it's a really effective and fun trick to do. So that's it. Here he is, chomping down on that Apache helicopter. Maybe it's a Hind D, I don't know. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you next time.